Well, it's actually a great argument for pure research because we didn't start out to do a search engine at all. Um, in late 1995, I started collecting the links on the web because um, my advisor and I decided that would be a good thing to do. Um, and we didn't know exactly what I was going to do with it. Um, but it seemed like no one was really looking at the links on the web, you know, which pages link to which pages. And computer scientists love big graphs. And this is like, you know, right now it has like five billion edges and, you know, two billion nodes. So it's a, it's a huge graph. And I figured I could get a dissertation and do something fun and perhaps practical at the same time, which is really what motivates me. And so Anyway, I started off by reversing the links, and then I wanted to find, you know, basically say, you know, who links to the Stanford homepage? And there's 10,000 people who link to Stanford. And then the question is, well, which ones do you show? So you can only show 10. You know, and we ended up with this way of ranking links um, based on the links. And then we were like, wow, this is really good. You know, it ranks things like, you know, in the order you'd expect to see them. You know, Stanford would be first. You can take universities and just rank them and they come out in the order you'd expect. Um, and so we thought, this is really interesting. You know, this thing really works. Um, we should use it for search. And so I started building a search engine, and Sergey also came on very early, um, probably in ni late 95 or early 96, and started, was really interested in the data mining part. And, um, you know, basically we thought, oh, we, we should be able to make a better search engine this way, because search engines didn't really understand the notion of, you know, which pages were more important. You know, if you type Stanford, you get sort of random pages that mention Stanford. This obviously wasn't going to work. It obviously wasn't going to scale. Artificial intelligence would be the ultimate version of Google. So if we had the ultimate search engine, it would understand everything on the web. It would understand, um, you know, exactly what you wanted. And it would give you the right thing. And that's obviously artificial intelligence. You know, be able to answer any question basically because almost everything is on the web, right? And so we're nowhere near doing that now. Um, however, we can get incrementally closer to that, and that's basically what we work on. And that's tremendously interesting from an intellectual standpoint, right? You know, we have all this data. If you printed out our index, it would be seventy miles high now. Um, we have all this computation. We have about six thousand computers. So we have a lot of resources available. That we have enough to space to store like 100 copies of the whole web. Um, so you have a really interesting sort of confluence of a lot of different things, right? A lot of computation, a lot of data that didn't used to be available. And you know, from an engineering scientific standpoint, building things to you know, make use of this is a really interesting intellectual exercise. So I expect to be doing that for a while. Um, on the other hand, I do have a lot of other interests as well. I'm really interested in transportation and sustainable energy. And, you know, sort of for fun, I invent things on the side. Um, but I don't really have time to follow up on them. If you want to see an awesome clip of a young Sergey Brin, check it out right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. I was really interested in computers uh, ever since I got one when I was in elementary school. And uh, eventually, I went on to to join the PhD program in computer science at Stanford.